Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. So in this video I'd like to give you guys an update on my morning glory plants here. So I'll start off here in the polytunnel which is where they've grown the most as it's the warmest most tropical environment I've got. So they've actually grown really well. Whilst I was living at my parents house I kept them nicely trained and every single day I was winding the, um, the stems around the, the supports I'd given them. But then a couple of months ago I moved to my new house and I haven't been able to train them since which is why it's become a bit of a tangled mess. But you can see here, I, had, I did actually have it nicely trained along here. And if I continued training it, I could have probably trained it over here over this summer. But as I say, I went over and moved into a new house. So what's happened now is it's just kind of become a tangled mess. But it does flower really nicely. Every day we probably have about 20 or 30 flowers. You do have to come in the morning though. As soon as it gets to midday, the, the flowers tend to shrivel up and die. It's currently about half 11 and uh, they are just starting to go over. You can see a little bit of crinkly on the edge of the, some of these petals. Um, so they don't last long, so you do have to come in the morning to see them. They just last one day, but there's so many that come every day. There's always a good display every morning. Let's give you an example of how many flowers there's been. This was clear of flowers probably about a week or so ago. And you can see it's absolutely covered in all flowers that have dropped off. So it's been putting on lots and lots of flowers. It's also had a little bit of red spider mite on and off, but it's generally not been too bad. It seems to have come through okay. I'll go around the other side now, let you see the other side of the, um, the plant. This side seems to do a little bit better because this is the sunnier side. The other side is the north side, so it's a bit more shaded. It doesn't have as many flowers. So this is the north side, and as you can see, there's a lot less flowers. Still plenty of foliage though. It's formed a nice green wall. There'll definitely be quite a lot of clearing out work to do um, later on in the year when it comes to cutting this back. But this should keep growing really until the frosts. I might give it a bit of a feed because it's starting to go a bit yellow. It's looking quite tired. It's grown so much um, in such a short space of time and it's been put on so many flowers and so many leaves that it's probably used up a lot of the nutrients in the soil. So I'm going to give this a feed, keep it growing. I think if I don't feed it, it's probably going to peter out and die. And in fact, a few of the ones outside have all have actually died. It seems to be very uh, nutrient dependent. I've got two back at my house in identical pots and one that's been well fed is doing really well and the other one is kind of petering out. So they seem to like a lot of feed. They do do quite well even without feed. They're still quite vigorous, but if you feed them, they do seem to do an awful lot better. So I think this is probably the nicest part. Uh, this is the nicest flowering section anyway. You can see they're absolutely covered. It does depend, it does uh, vary from day to day which section is in flower, which isn't. So you can see here on the newer growth, there's loads and loads of flower buds starting to form. You can see there, lots of flower buds. So it's gonna be flowering up in this section and up here in a few weeks time. It tends to flower on the newer growth. So uh, it'll probably be moving around where it flowers. That's all for this part of the, um, the polytunnel video. And I'll show you some out that outside of my parents' garden. You can just see the difference not having a tropical environment does and not having the perfect uh, soil conditions as well. So this here is a morning glory plant that I planted outside just a month or two after the other plants and it's really far behind. It's been quite weak at growing, hasn't really done much at all. Part of the reason is when it was down the bottom here, this is the north facing corner, so it's, it's very shaded. But even once it's come up here where it gets a bit more sunlight, it's still not growing very strongly. I think the reason being there's not that much nutrients. It's kind of competing with other plants for nutrients down here. It's grown up this string and you can see it is flowering. We do get probably a flower most days. Uh, some days it doesn't flower, it just depends. It, it's not a very strong plant, so it's not got lots of flowers at a time. But you can see the new growth on it as well is quite weak. The, uh, the leaves are very small. It's really struggling. It's too cold, too shady, and um, it just doesn't have enough nutrients. So this one's really struggling. Now we even had a morning glory planted over here, but this one's actually completely died off. This one was in a sunnier location, um, but I think it was just out of competing because there's a lot more established plants here. So I think the, the nutrients levels weren't enough. It seems to be very nutrient dependent, especially when you're growing it in a colder climate where it's not used to. You can see here, it's got a, an old flower bud there and it did spiral up. It did actually go about halfway up this pole, so it grew up to about a meter or so, but it's just died off now and completely dead. Um, that's all that's left of it really is a, a bit of stem. So I'll take you now to my, my house and I'll show you the ones and how they've done. I've got one in my conservatory and I've also got three outside as well. So I've taken you now to my, my house to show you the morning glory plants here. Now they, they were looking better a few weeks ago but recently the weather started to get a bit cooler and so they're not looking quite at their best but they're still flowering quite well this morning. So this is the one that's done the best. Um, it's interesting to see that they've actually planted up two identical pots, one on the left one on the, the right, both have the same type of compost in them, but one has done really badly 
other one has done really well. This one grew up and started flowering probably two months ago and it's been flowering ever since. It was a bit slow to get going and uh, to, to climb onto the, the, the railings here but once it caught onto the railings it really grew very fast and you can see it's now got to the top of the railings and it's looking for something else to climb on. So I might need to just try and wrap that back round and get it to go back down again. Which might be a bit difficult because it does naturally want to grow up. But it's grown really well, lots of flowers every morning. This one's looking really healthy. I'm keeping this well fed, but I've also well kept this other one well fed. The only difference with this is there was a, uh, a potato that stuck into the compost and I've actually got a big potato uh, plant now growing in this pot. So you can see this plant here, it's just grown really small. It did flower quite a bit, you can see there's quite a few seed pods now starting to form. It did flower well, um, but it just never really put on a lot of vigour, it never really grew huge. And the reason is, a lot of the nutrients and water was getting robbed from it from the potato plant here. So this has suffered, whereas the one on the left here didn't have any of the nutrients robbed. So it's had all that nutrients to itself and it's grown much bigger and much better. So although the climate is not ideal for it outside, this is a really sunny position. It's really sheltered. You've got the, um, the giant sunflowers here giving some shelter from the wind, but not too much shade. We've also got the house here with shelter and it's southeast facing as well. So it gets the, mo the morning sun and the midday sun as well. So it's really quite warm, heats out quickly in the morning. It just seems to really like this position. So it seems that you can grow them outside in Scotland if they're really well fed and they've also got a really sunny position and some of that's quite warm. But it's interesting to see that if they're well fed, see how well they do. If they're not well fed, such as this one here, they really do struggle if they, if they have to compete with any of the other plants. So in this section here where I've got some sunflowers, I also planted a couple of other, uh, other ones. I had originally wanted them to grow up the, the, uh, the drain pipe behind, but the drain pipe has kind of got smothered by the uh, sunflowers. So the morning glory plant is now actually climbing up the sunflowers and the souffle plants. So I think what I might do in the future is if I grow sunflowers, I might plant morning glories at the base of them, kind of June time when it's warmed up. And also that gives the, the sunflowers time to grow with, so they don't get smothered by the morning glory climbers. And that way, once the sunflowers are finished, we've got some other flowers coming on. I wouldn't do it on a multi-branching one like this because this is going to flower all summer long. But these single-headed ones, because they're such short season plants, it's quite a, a, quite a nice way to prolong the growing season. So you can see we've got a little flower up there coming on. They are just kind of twining around now, you can see, climbing up these plants. And there's a few just kind of dotted around, you can see a few more down here. So this is much more shaded, this position, but they seem to be growing quite well on here as well. It's, again, it's sheltered by the house. It's well fed, I keep feeding it lots. Um, it's probably not as well fed as the ones in the pots because it does have to compete with the, sun, the sunflowers, but it's grown up quite nice. And there are some more plants further in here, but they're kind of hard to find because the, uh, the sunflowers have kind of been growing and choking things out so much. You can just see there, there's a shoe fly plant and twining up the shoe fly plant, we've got some more morning glory flowers. And if I hopefully you can see it through here, we've also got a few more flowers coming on inside the plants. So the last morning glory plant I've got is this one here. Now I had originally planned to grow it up in this shady corner here, up that drain pipe there, but I figured I decided it was actually too shady in that corner. It doesn't really ever get the sun. Even at midday, the conservancy blocks it out and the house blocks it out. So I just kind of left it here. It's got the same compost mix as the two at the front, just a slightly different pot, but the pot is roughly the same size. The only real difference with this one is it's not actually had anything to grow up, so it's just become like a sprawling mess. But it still flowered really well. It's, uh, it doesn't, I don't think it does quite as well though, because what happens is it wraps around itself like this. And when that happens, it doesn't get as much sunlight because you've just got lots of congested leaves overlapping each other. So the plant's not going to grow to its full potential. It can still look quite nice because it can trail over the edge of the pot. Still flowers well. As I say, it doesn't, it's not going to get it to its full size, it's not going to get to its full potential because it's really um, starting to shade itself out with all the leaves climbing on top of itself. This again, is at, this is actually the sunniest position out of all the plants because this gets sun all day long. There's nothing that shades this at all. Um, but it doesn't look like it's quite as lush. I think partly because it doesn't have anything to climb up, but also because it's a bit more exposed here, so it, it's not as warm, it doesn't trap the heat in the sun like it does with the other plants. Next to a wall, the sun's gonna heat up the wall and give it a bit of extra warmth. Here it doesn't get that extra warmth, but it's still growing well. I've been feeding this as well lots with tomato feed. As you can see, it has grown fairly well considering it's in the Scottish environment. 
So finally I'd like to finish off with this morning glory plant here. This is in the conservatory. This one's actually growing the best out of all the plants, but at the moment it's, I think it's just starting to go over. The reason being it's in quite a small pot, so it's limited to how much nutrients and space this roots can resolve from. And um, because it's had a hotter environment, it's kind of going to make it go over a little bit faster. So you can see here, it's got a few flowers. The flowers tend to be a bit bigger and a bit more vibrant in their colour in the, in the conservatory. I think that extra heat we've got in here really helps it. They, they are tropical plants, they're going to struggle a little bit with the, the Scottish climate. So the extra heat of the conservatory really seems to help with the colour and also the size of the flowers. This was actually have, this actually had more numerous flowers than the, the ones outside and I've just let it kind of climb up over this, um, this shelving unit here. It's done okay. Some of it did trail around the ground, um, which did get a bit messy, but most of it climbed up here. And it, even though it doesn't look like a very big plant, it, it did actually flower a lot better than the ones outside, much more numerous flowers. What I've done recently is I've cut off a few of the excess stems and I've started to feed it again with a, a high nitrogen feed just to encourage some new growth, as it's the new growth which has the flowers. So you can see there's some new shoots starting to come out. I might switch to a, um, a potassium feed soon and we'll see what happens. I just want to see if I can keep this growing. I think it's really getting to the end of its life cycle. It looks like they kind of do act quite a bit like a, an annual. Once they've put on lots of flowers, it's just kind of die down. But I'll give it a good feed, see if that'll reboost it a bit. I also had some spare seeds, so I just threw the whole packet of seeds in the, in the ground and they all germinate within a couple of days. So these are probably going to come up and start growing and flowering, even if this main one doesn't. So that's all for my Morning Glory plants update. That's probably going to be the last one, unless the ones in the polytunnel do anything interesting. The, uh, it's getting to the end of the year now, it's the end of, of uh, August. Last night we had temperatures down to 6 degrees, so it's really starting to get cold nights again. We're probably going to get a frost within the next couple of weeks, because we quite often get frost in September. So that'll be the end of the, the Morning Glory plants, and they definitely are slowing down. I wanted to show you them absolutely covered in flowers, which they have been in the past, but as I say, they really started to slow down now. There's not many flowers left in them because it's getting towards the end of the season. Our daylight levels are getting a bit low now, and also the temperatures are a bit low for them, so they're going to start petering out. But it'll be interesting to see what the polytunnel plants do. They won't get frost for probably another two or three months because the polytunnel keeps it just that little bit warmer. And where my parents are, they're right next to the, the coast, so they don't get any hard frost until November or December time. So they're going to be well protected from frost. It'll be interesting to see if they can keep growing with the, uh, the lower light levels and the cooler temperatures.